Asia and the Pacific are faced with significant challenges in water security and resilience. Over 300 million people still don't have access to basic water supply, and 1.14 billion lack access to safe sanitation. Rapid urbanization and population growth contribute to a rising demand for water for food and energy production, putting additional pressure on an already water-stressed environment. Add to that the constant scourge of typhoons, flooding, and other natural hazards exacerbated by the impacts of climate change. Water cuts across almost every single development sector, including sanitation, agriculture, climate uncertainty, technology, and gender. ADB's water sector portfolio of about over $26 billion is implemented across 46 developing member countries in the region, benefiting the lives of over 650 million people. But even this is just a fraction of the people that still need help in our region for water security and resilience. WFPF allows ADB to do business as unusual. It contributes resources to support innovations as well as funds to do better project preparation, resulting in higher quality outputs to support more inclusive, sustainable, and resilient uh, water sector development in Asia and the Pacific. In 2019, I was able to access funds from ADB's WFPF for Uzbekistan to help develop the country's concept for national water resources management strategy. At that time, Uzbekistan did not have a policy framework for water resources management. Through that initial financing from WFPF, we were able to work with the Uzbek government and the Swiss Agency for Development Cooperation in the actual approval and endorsement by the President of Uzbekistan of the country's national water resources strategy. WFPF directly contributed to the country's national policy framework. In the agriculture, natural resources, and rural development sector. The key water financing partnership facility beneficiaries are the farmers. For example, in Cambodia or Lao PDR, many farmers are smallholders where land and water resources are scarce. If we can provide them access to water on a regular basis and help them manage water on demand, they will be able to produce higher quality, high value crops in stable quantities to meet the market demand. This would mean higher prices and higher income, more livelihood opportunities, and better education for their kids. WFPF funding has enabled us to be more agile and flexible in adapting the small-scale innovations in the country context of the Pacific Island countries. It has provided us quick and timely funding and consultant support to meet the changing demand of our clients in the face of high uncertainties. The Water Financing Partnership Facility funding is incredibly important for ADB, in my division in particular, but for everyone in ADB, WFPF funds allow us to prepare projects to a much higher level of quality or implement projects much more effectively than would be possible otherwise. The incremental WFPF funds of thousands of dollars allows us the ability to push the envelope and leverage hundreds of million dollars in loan financing for projects that are far more innovative, inclusive, and sustainable. They also help us address challenges such as climate change. These funds make a huge difference to our program. We will continue to use the WFPF resources to directly impact and leverage outcomes of ADB's water projects and programs. Aligned with the new water sector directional guide under ADB Strategy 2030, our focus will be on bridging the financing gap, building climate change resilience, promoting inclusiveness and gender equality, supporting circular economy, fostering innovation and digital transformation. We have massive work ahead of us, but we can help each other move toward 
the goal of a water secure and resilient Asia and the Pacific. We will achieve more if we work together.